ha ha or should I say mwa ha 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 Welcome back to the studio, Ryan aka Bloodshot Airbrushing And you might be wondering why we're hanging out in the dark Me and the pup Yeah, we're hanging out in the dark because we are back for another Lumilore project And this stuff, man, let me tell ya Mind blowing let me get the lights back up on in here and we can chat about this a little more in depth. That's better. Now you can kind of see what we are working with. We've got a gas tank. Well, actually two gas tanks as it is split right down the middle. And we've got the Lumilor already applied. It's been cleared. I masked out my pinstripe, did the blackout. And you know what? I'm going to stop talking about it. And we're just going to quickly... Go through that process short and sweet just to get you guys on board so you can see how we got to and stay tuned because what we tackle next is gonna blow your mind and the first thing you're gonna need to do is encapsulate it in a layer of clear and then wet sand that clear and test for conductivity now here you can see I've got it all masked for the first layer of backplane. I even took a bit of extra time to mask the exterior edges of the next few layers just to save some masking time in the booth. And onto the booth we go where we've got proper ventilation and I do recommend wearing a respirator when we get into these paints. And here you see the first layer of our back plane, our conductive material being applied. And we will do two coats in a cross hatch manner. So each coat will actually have two passes done in the opposite direction. And once that's flashed, you can peel it. And as you've seen, as I said, Got those layers sort of pre-masked just to save some time. And now we're going in with our dielectric, which is again applied in two even coats consisting of two passes, each applied in opposite directions. And once you've got the dielectric, you are ready for the Luma color. Now this you must spray with a black light. As you see, this will help to keep your coverage consistent as you go. Pretty important that you're constantly shaking and agitating your paint. Lay it on, let it dry, and then you're ready to mask for your bus bar. Now it's important that your bus bar doesn't touch your back plane, so you need a minimum of 1 8 inch between the two, and then in order to get your paint to light up, you need one third the volume and applied in two coats much the same let her dry test for ohms attach your wires and then attach those to your power source here is where you apply a wet but quick layer of your conductive top coat instantly start to dehydrate that with a heat gun and success you gotta love the magic of lumilor let there be light and now you are ready for your favorite automotive clear Wet sand that was 600 and you are ready to do any artwork. Bada boom, bada bang, light it up, let it sing. Man, back from clears and ready to be masked for our first layer of paint. Now this Lumilor surface, especially when you're first learning it, you can get some, uh, some inconsistencies. So we're just going to cover that up with a little bit of Auto Air Pearl White. Now this is a water-based acrylic, and once we get it flowing, two consistent coats ought to do. Now do notice I'm doing all my passes in a sweeping motion. I'm allowing that paint to blend out and fade to my edge so that when I do my next pass, I'm blending back in. And this will give you nice consistent coverage as you go along. You don't want to build up that paint too heavy in one area because that light still has to fight through consistently. <laughs> That's the goal. All right, now that we got the pinstripe laid on there, we've got the bloodshot signature and the Lumilor and the year laid on there. I've cleaned off my little bit of a lip and I just use a bit of a Q-tip and just kind of rub it off with a little bit of Fantastic and that cleans that off nicely just to remove any hard edges 
So the next stage is, you can see when it's on, it's blue. When it's off, it's gray. So I got to continue that gray into the area of the pinup girl. And I'm going to black out the rest just up into this line right here. And then we can start tackling the artwork. And there you have it. We've got the black sprayed with our pinstripe saved for the Lumalore. Now we've got the copper revealed so that we can spray the gray kind of like that. And once the gray is all good and dry, we can peel it and we are ready to spray the skulls. It's a process. It's a bit of a process, but we're getting there. And there you have it, gray done. We can still see our pinstripe tape, which is holding its own, keeping that pearl white nice and bright. You can see the logo as well, which we will come back in in the later process to tighten up. But you can kind of see where we're at. But I did promise you something that would blow your mind. So let me kill the lights and let me show you what I'm talking about. And what did I tell you? What do you think of that? Pretty trick, eh? So in the daytime, basically, you're really only going to see her face. And then at nighttime, once you kick the light on, you're going to have the full-on Grim Reaper. Now this is actually the third iteration, and this is only a test panel. But how cool is that? <laughs> now the challenge is to reproduce this onto those. <laughs> Good thing we did a test panel. I always recommend a test panel. All right, let's spend a minute or two just chatting about this test panel and why I did a test panel. Now, I think it kind of speaks for itself in the fact that I had to do it three times before I found something that actually worked. Now, with that being said, it wasn't the girl that was the difficult part. She was actually pretty easy. As you can see, it was just done with some transparent colors. Just a white and a gray using our gray Lumalore and skull as a base. Yeah, there's a skull under there. Now, my first attempt, and the reason why it was such a failure, was because when I first tried to spray my skull, I used just white. I thought if I wanted a base for my face for the chick, that white would be a good base problem with white is it just didn't have the coverage power so I had to lay on so much of it before it started to actually black out and hide the light so the light would no longer fight through it problem one now had I gone further I would have found some more problems with using just white um, the thing that I've also learned is what I've been doing predominantly is I've been using just this test panel that has been cleared. I've been painting on top of it for test panels, wet sanding it off, painting on top, wet sanding it off. Now I only have so many layers of clear on this before I'm going to have to get this surface re-cleared to save me from sanding through the Lumalore. Well... Moving to these transparencies is definitely the key. Now these can be sprayed right over top. As you can see, I've actually got one taped down. Rather than spraying over top of the Lumilore, I'm just spraying on top of these transparencies. So that was my second lesson learned. And the third one, and one that I'm actually going to allude to right here is... You can see I tried to scratch with my X-Acto knife a bit of an edge. I was just seeing what I could do. Test panel. I also did the same thing with my lightning. Scratched it out. 
Well, now you can see the difference between my gray and the Lumilor gray. So, had I done white, that would be even more apparent. Big, big deal here, guys, is to make sure that when you are making your hidden reveal that you match this gray. Even, you can see my gray out is a little off tone. That's okay, there's no light under here. But when I get to spraying my skull, I'm going to have to make sure I've got a 100% as close as possible match to this gray. Otherwise, we will have some issues later on where you will see the difference in tones. You can kind of see it a little bit here. So that's going to be the big challenge. But before we go any further, I think we should speak a little bit about yet another challenge that had to be overcome to get this project underway. And we are speaking of the drawing and stenciling phase. Now, for the girl on this, we just simply went to the good old Googles and we pulled this image off the interweb because she's quite a looker. And then from there, I took this and I sized it down to the proper size and went black and white to save some ink and used this for my sizing so I knew what we were doing for the Lumilor and used this initially for my sizing for my skull. So, all I did was take this photocopy, well, actually this photocopy, and with some tracing paper, as you can see, I drew my skull over top. Now, she's kind of squinting, and tracing paper doesn't give you the best see-through. So, when it all was said and done, I took this, I photocopied it, to the size I needed, I cut myself some stencils to get this guy rolling and started to spray. Well, once I had it all done and did the transparency of the chick over top, she did not line up perfectly with the eyes and the teeth of this skull. So come with me as we travel back in time to see the first iteration where, again, these teeth just aren't lining up, the pupils are off, and something has to give. So back to the drawing board, quite literally. <laughs> so come with me, Morty, as we travel back to the future. So this was a bit of an issue because, as you probably guess, it's quite important to have the teeth and the eyes line up. But that was okay. It was just a test sample. So we went back to the drawing board. Now this time... What I did was, is I took my photocopy of the size. Color is sometimes easier because you can grab more of the tones. And now I took this and cut this into my stencil so that I've got something to map out my chick on A and B. <laughs> well... I took this image and I ghosted it onto a piece of paper in blue. You can kind of see it in behind my drawing and then I just drew right over top of that. So now the teeth, the eyes, everything was exactly on par. And then we took this drawing and went ahead and made our stencils from here. So this guy can go at this stage and we are rolling with this dude as our new stencil set. And we will go through the process in the next video on how I used these stencils to get this 
gnarly little reaper laid and sprayed down onto one of the sides of these gas tanks because recording it twice is a little redundant. <laughs> and then I decided to go one step further and cut another stencil. I usually only cut my dark tones. This time I've got my darks and my medium tones. So this guy is going to be more sprayed in to really get some defined black edges. And then this guy gets lightly dusted over top. And I'm talking about it too much. In video number two, you can join me and see exactly how I do. Now for a bibbity bobbity boo. <laughs> Yeah, like magic. So there you have it, folks. I hope that gets you geared up and primed for the next one where we start shooting some paint onto these bad boys. And we'll get this hidden reveal underway. As always, if you have any questions, drop me a line. If there's anything I missed, feel free to add. If you have anything that you can add, if you've worked on this product before, this amazing Lumalore, if you've done hidden reveals and you're like, nope, you're doing it all wrong, throw some information down. This is obviously my first time attempting anything like this ever. <laughs> but I'm quite pleased with where we're at. So... I guess you know how it goes. Like, follow, subscribe. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Cheers. And feel free to slide on by the Bloodshot Airbrushing webpage where we've got printable PDF downloads, a French Curve set of six, cheaper than a trip to Starbucks. And we've also got the Spreadshirt page where you can grab yourself up some gear, wear a uniform, and support the cause. And don't forget, guys, we've got airbrushing hacks, airbrushing for beginners, and plenty of tutorials. Tell the world the Bloodshot Army is here to spray.